In this tutorial, we are going to be making the game of Breakout in Unity. To start, there is a link in the description in order to download the assets we're going to be using, which are the bat and ball file and our blocks. So once you have those downloaded, move them into your assets folder and we can begin our first part of the video where we just set up the play area. So the way we're going to, first thing we need to do is import the sprites. So by pressing Control shift and left clicking on both, I can select the two sprites. And what I want for these is to set the sprite mode to be multiple. I want there to be 100 pixels, no, 16 pixels per unit. I do not want MIP maps. And a point to filter, that way there were they just display per pixel and a true color, that way they uh, have the appropriate visuals. Which, you won't get any weird fuzziness with your sprites. And after that, go into the sprite editor window and just drag boxes around the different sprites. So one is for the ball, one is for our bat. Once that is done, we'll have our individual sprites for our bat and one for our ball. Now the next set of sprites is for our blocks. So once again, we go into our sprite editor, but since I don't want to drag boxes around all of these, instead I'll use grid by cell count. And we have how many rows? One, two six rows worth of objects and if I were to click slice it does the slicing automatically and I'm just going to name each of these blocks that way it's easier to keep track of them and after these blocks have been set up we are going to just place them in a group that represents how we want the game level to look like. That way we can set up our camera and the hitboxes to represent the edges of the screen. Alright, so here we have our blocks. I'm just going to drag them in one at a time and I want them to be centered on the grid. 0 0.5 in the Y and 0 for the X. That way they are fitted at the right spot and we won't have any inconsistencies with their position. They'll be exactly same distance and uh, I want to just create a a 7 by 5 length area for our blocks. So I'll select all of these by holding Control shift and then copying, paste them, just creating our copies just so we can create a scene that best represents how our game is going to look like. Now what you may notice is that there are these weird lines appearing by the sprites and the way I found to fix that is you go into your M it's edit and then into your project settings you go down to quality and then there's this one for anti-aliasing and you need to disable it and that'll get rid of the weird lines that are appearing mm -hmm. now the reason why I decided to do a 5x7 array of these blocks is because I feel like it creates a large enough play area to be enjoyed and I'm just going to move the camera to a reasonable size to fit in our game objects and allow it so you can still have a you can still have a scoreboard and a lives counter because on one part of the screen we are wanting to display our lives to represent how many balls we have left to fire at the blocks and we want some sort of timer for how long we've been in this level. 
So now that that's done, I'm going to, I want to clean up all this stuff. The way I'm going to do that is by going into game object and creating an empty game object. I want to center it at 0, 0, and then select all of these. Actually, I can just do this. All of my bricks or blocks, and just put them as a child of the game object. You don't want your camera being a child, so I'm just going to name this blocks. And that way our hierarchy doesn't just have this massive list of the same game object that is supposed to be right next to each other. Next, I want to take this ball and make it a child of the bat. Oh wait, first I need to center it over x is 0, put it at the y position I want, and really this is just to make sure it's lined up with the bat. And you can do this after you made it as a child, it's just easier to make sure it's lined up before. So now, the reason I did this is because when you line up your ball and bat in order to choose where you want to fire it from, the ball needs to move with the bat. So it's just easier to make it a child because children move with the parent objects. So. Now that we have our bat and our blocks, it's time to create the edges of the screen. So when playing Breakout, we want our ball to bounce back at the edges, and we want enough space between the edge on the right and the blocks in order to do some special maneuvers, which is why it's good that I have this camera to the size. Now, the easiest thing to way to do this is to use hitboxes. So I'm going to create another empty game object and just align it at about x equals 0 and 6 equals or y equals 6.5. After that, I want to create a physics 2D box collider 2D. And then well, let's move it up to 7. And then I want to edit the collider so it's big enough to fit in all this space. Another thing I could have done was just input the values directly from here. And on second thought, I want the game object to be right up at the edge. So I'm going to name this top. Now I need three more. So we are going to have our bottom. This is going to detect when you lost a life, but this one needs to be an is trigger because we don't want our ball to be bouncing off the bottom. We want it to pass through it and then lose a life and reset the ball back to the bat. All right, so we're going to name this bottom, and we need two more for the left and right. So this one, we're going to rotate the z-axis 90 degrees. We're going to move it over to the right and yeah that looks like a good spot for it. Now I'm going to name this right and I can copy this and place it on the left side. And I'll just place it right here and I'll name it left. Now, I just want to take all these objects and make them children of the main camera. So now whenever I click on my camera, I can see the boundaries of the space really easily. And on that note, we are now basically finished with setting up the play area. In the next episode, we are going to make the bat and ball move around and we're going to make it so you can fire the ball and for it to bounce off the walls like we would expect. So stay tuned until the next time, and goodbye.